When the chainsaw came on the scene in the 1920s, it revolutionized the forestry industry. From then on, it was only a matter of time before some creative lumberjacks had a new idea to use the chainsaw like a sculptor's chisel and make art. And like the famous Venus de Milo, it's just a bit of armless fun. These chainsaw sculptures range from cartoon-like characters to realistic reproductions of wildlife. The artistic endeavour does come with significant risk. One wrong move with a chainsaw can cause serious injury. By official request, this particular logger artist cuts down bugwood, pine trees killed by mountain pine beetles. Brandishing a chainsaw with a 40 centimetre blade, he'll transform this log into a turkey. The first cut forms a higher back, which will eventually become the tail feathers. The second cut establishes the top of the head. Then he cuts away wood in between to begin shaping the body. He removes wood from the front to begin forming the turkey's beard and breast. Then he removes wood from the sides to shape the wings. And this is a turkey in strutting pose. The wings are thrusting downward. After shaping the breast further and carving the feet, the chainsaw is exchanged for a pencil and he outlines 19 tail feathers. Then he gently carves his lines with the tip of a chainsaw. He also carves the outlines of the feathers located under the tail feathers. Then using the tip ever so lightly, he makes delicate lines inside each feather. With the rough shape now complete, he begins working on the finer details, such as sculpting each wing feather. Then he carves some even finer details with a die grinder, a tool which can use interchangeable bits. He uses a cone-shaped bit to carve the turkey's feet. Then a sanding disc to work on the breast. Then a small wheel to carve the lower breast feathers. Now he tackles the snood, which is that flap of skin over the turkey's beak. He makes it curved rather than hanging straight down to make the turkey look as though it's moving. To craft the eyes, he uses a tool that he made himself by attaching a modified bolt to a die grinder. The eyes are the artistic turning point as they add the first hint of facial expression. Using the cone shape bit again, the artist shaves off wood underneath the eyes, which means they'll protrude slightly. Then using a variety of bits, he does some touch-ups on the snood. And he also sculpts the sack of skin under the turkey's neck. Then he brands small circles on the skin sack to add visual texture. With the carving now complete, the burning begins. Using a small gas torch, he scorches the wood. The raised areas become darker than the recessed areas, giving the feathers contrast and depth. step is some finer detail texturing. He attaches a soft wire brush to a drill and smooths out the tips of the feathers. He coats the finished carving in a sealer, a homemade concoction of equal parts of white spirit, heavy duty marine varnish and boiled linseed oil. This sealer gives the surface a rich semi-gloss luster but more importantly it protects the wood against the elements which is critical given that these carvings are usually displayed outdoors. It forms a suit of armour against rain and the sun's ultraviolet rays. Yet the sealant isn't an airtight shield. It still lets the wood breathe, which is critical for preventing mould growth. It's also flexible, moving with the natural expansion and contraction of the wood. An inflexible sealant would crack, letting water seep in. So whatever the logger artist decides to create, whether it be bear, totem pole or bird, this durable protective finish will help turn a right turkey into an investment piece that I'm sure someone will gobble up.